Peace to the Saints. Today we are reviewing the best show, not on Netflix. It might even be the best show that's out right now. This show is entitled The Godfather of Harlem, and it is starring one of the greatest actors that doesn't get the due respect he deserves, which is Forrest Whitaker. Now, maybe if Forrest Whitaker looked like Denzel, he'd get a little bit more respect put on his name. But The Godfather of Harlem is a remarkable piece for a couple reasons. Number one, it involves a lot of characters who were real life individuals, such as Bumpy Johnson, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, um, and the political guy. Uh, is it Adam Clayton Powell? But it takes the reality and bends it just a little bit and adds a lot of invention. You know, a lot of things that didn't quite happen in real life are added to spice things up, which is understandable. That's how Hollywood works. What you'll really appreciate about this show is, number one, if you like gangster movies, if you like mob movies, The Godfather, Casino, all of these classics, you still get that gritty experience and that there are a lot of gangster things that happen, but you still get the African-American side if you want to dig into that side of the organized crime. So you got this whole, you know, American gangster meets casino experience where you got all of it coming together with the greatest cast of actors I've seen in a long while. We know Forrest Whitaker is a mastermind. When he played Edie, I mean that that should have let you guys all know in The Last King of Scotland that he was the guy. But then you also have a few other actors who are quite remarkable, like Vincent D'Onofrio. He plays Chin Gigante who is an amazing actor and quite humorous. What you'll find is that one thing you're going to love about the show is being that it's based in the 60s. This is before everyone was woke. This is before people were scared to speak their mind. So people are not only honest, but they're even racist. They're discriminatory. It makes you feel good to hear what people really think. And that's why we love gangsters after all, right? Because they just tell it how it is like rappers used to do. So you'll hear the, the N-word thrown around a couple times. I haven't heard Mooley. You know, me, you know, I like to hear Mooley. Mooley's one of my favorites, you know, the Moulinians, which is an Italian derogatory term for African-American or maybe just black, but it's quite comical the way they use it. So the show is not only gangster, it's a gritty crime drama, but it's also very humorous. And it's loosely based on reality. Uh, some of the things that you'll find do reflect reality as it shows the nation of Islam. It is accurate in the way it reflects the dress of the men and the women. It is also accurate in pointing out that one of their core strategies was helping people get off of drugs. So you see that that's something they show quite a bit, which is an ironic thing because Malcolm X is connected to Bumpy Johnson, who is clearly a gangsta and someone who's helping spread drugs through the black Harlem community. Where there's great exaggeration is in the idea that the Italians and African-American gangs were collaborating at a high level with African-Americans being in leadership, engaging as peers. You know, according to the Italian side of things, this is quite far from accurate. Now, someone wrote that the Irishman is pretty good. The Irishman is trash. And see, you made me curse. I didn't even want to curse, but the Irishman is trash. And that's why I'm here curating this for you. When you enjoy something, you have to speak on it and bring it to people. Some of the other uh, curious things about this show is that as Hollywood usually is trying to push forward certain agendas, um, largely related to the uh, people who fly a multicolored flag, if you know what I mean, you don't really see much of that being pushed in this series. Yes, they talk about race, but it's the 1960s. Race is still a major issue. You're still having a lot of activism going on. So it's very appropriate being that this is a period piece. However, the only time that homosexuality actually comes up is when they refer to a character named Big Dick Buster, which is an unfortunate name. And apparently when these particular gangsters would capture their enemy, they'd have Big Dick Buster give them the old in and out against their will, which is a very scary thing. I wouldn't cross these people. They're ruthless. But aside from that, it's a great show that I highly recommend. Another thing that I want to point out in terms of like great theatrical performance is uh, Giancarlo 
Esposito. I never knew that cat's name. He's always playing a black person, but looking at his name, he might be Italian and Latino. Who knows? A little mix of the two of them. Um, and um, yeah, he does a great job with Adam Clayton Powell. He is extremely funny and very much so as a caricature of the politician that we imagine you know, everyone is, right? Which is saying this to the people, but doing these other things behind closed doors, making immoral compromises and things like that. So he is a very comical fellow and they casted him fairly well because if you've actually seen Adam Clayton Powell, he's barely black, right? And so they, they picked the right person for him. And the other guy, Nigel Thatch, who plays Malcolm X, eh, I wasn't really sold on it. He's doing an okay job. But if you've actually seen his career evolve over time, and he's been acting for a while, I, I recognize him, he pretty much always plays the same person. And he kind of does resemble Malcolm X. So that was a reasonable casting in terms of his appearance. But his acting skill, I don't find him to be a powerful actor. And he's on stage with a lot of powerful actors. Forrest Whitaker is the best actor out there. You dig. Vincent D'Onofrio is doing a stand-up job, and he really has me convinced that he's a real racist who hates black guys, and he does a great job at making it somehow funny every now and then. Um, and whoever's writing for this show is a brilliant writer, and this is something we're finding increasingly less of as the average person in the society is nearly brain dead. So you don't need good writing. You just need a car crash or a car chase or some nudity, but these guys are really writing. It's an engaging series, and you've heard people say, oh, well, I don't like the series because they're taking real-life characters and putting fiction into it. Well, that's what Hollywood does. If you want reality, you need to watch a documentary or a docudrama, or better yet, read a book. But they are giving some of the, you know, the, the top-line uh, realities of the characters, right? That'll allow you to learn about the character and go do your own research. One thing I will say is that today we're seeing a lot of the leftists portray Malcolm X. And Malcolm X was a very conservative individual. After all, he was a part of the Nation of Islam. And the Nation of Islam believes, one, we're not talking about Sunni Islam. We're talking about the Nation of Islam founded by Elijah Poole, also known as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said the white man is the devil, not like the devil, but is the devil incarnate. They also were not a fan of people who have sugar in their tank. So now in the modern era, the leftists have taken Malcolm X and tried to redress him up as someone you know, more understanding and accepting when really he had standards and didn't back down from those standards. So he was, he was quite a fiery fellow. And, and that's what we're missing in the actor who's portraying Malcolm X. Nigel, in part due to his acting and also in part due to the writing, is a very mild character. There's no fire there. Also, shout out, give an honorable mention to Eric LaRay Harvey, my cousin's name is LaRae, but Eric LaRae Harvey does a great job in his minor role as one of the support members in Bumpy Johnson's criminal organization. And it's important to see how these criminal enterprises operate because, you know, for me, I admire when people can have legitimate institutions outside of the legal society because that's real entrepreneurship. You're building everything from scratch. You can't even appeal to the police or appeal to the legal system if things go wrong. You don't sue people. You got to handle it yourself. And shout out to Ch uh, Chaz uh, Palminteri because Chaz is a classic actor. And that is why this, mo this uh, show has the feel of a movie, has the feel of classic mafia Italian mobster fair because he's in there and man, he is the standard. He's like the Joe Pesci of this thing. You dig? So shout out to Chas. The brother is doing his thing. And of course you have Paul Sorvino. He's the guy who plays Frank Costello. He's kind of like the, the sleepy mob boss and he's been in every mob movie. There are some great actors in this. I just cannot emphasize enough. There are a couple female actors that I'm not sure are females. I'm not going to name any names. You dig? If you take a close look, you might see which one I'm talking about. But there's some great plot twists in this and I highly, highly recommend it. But I wanted to do this. I wanted to do something different. One, because it's such an engaging show and I'm almost tempted to figure out how I can do a, a live stream on Amazon where we can watch it together and kind of dissect it because there's so much knowledge. 
Uh, Jundell writes, peace to the same paying tuition. This is my first time using PayPal and sending money abroad. I really appreciate all the things you do for us, Saint. Much respect and love from a brother here in the Philippines. Wow. I truly appreciate that, John Dell. That means a lot to me. Uh, one, because it's a consideration. And two, you're sending it all the way from the Philippines and it's the first time. So thank you very much for the support. Uh, that was via PayPal. I think we're all caught up on that side of things. Saints, it has been a pleasure to have you tune in uh, to chop up this little bit of uh, knowledge about this great series that I highly recommend. And anything with Forrest Whitaker in it is a masterpiece. They have a star cast. Great show. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, please write below. Uh, share your perspective. Anything I missed out or anything I should have addressed, go ahead and pop it in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, not only subscribe, but click the bell. Because when I go live, I go live unexpectedly. Hey, peace to the saints. Let us end this the way we always end this with the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time.